hear the phrase no pain, no gain all the time when it comes to exercise, but is it true? Maggie Downey is here to separate fact from fiction. So Maggie, I'm so glad that we're talking about this and I can't speak for all women, but myself and my close friends, family, I feel like we have a hard time resting. We constantly want to achieve the next goal, whether that be fitness related or just life related. And so I think it's hard for us to take a step back and really listen to our bodies, especially when we're working out. Oh yeah, I mean, I think we've all heard that expression, no pain, no gain when it comes to exercise. And the truth of the matter is, that statement's not true and it's potentially harmful. So it's, it's okay to take a step back and check in with our body. So I think most of us presume that we're not doing enough unless our workout is grueling and we're not doing enough unless we're sore the next day. And the research just shows the exact opposite. So if you push to the point where you're in pain during a workout, you're more likely to get injured, and then you won't be able to keep working out. And if you're sore the day or two after a workout, you actually reduce your chance potentially of making gains if you get too sore and increase your chance of getting injured because it's not functional, right? You can say like, oh, I worked my lower half in a workout one day and my upper half the next, but you can't say that in life, right? During the day, you actually need to use your legs to go up and down stairs, get on and off the toilet. You need your arms to pick up your children and reach for something on a high shelf. You don't just get to say, I'm not using my body today, you know? I, so it's really not practical. No, it's really not. And I feel like that was the measure, honestly, recently too. Like when I work out, if I am not sore and in pain after, I'm like, oh, I must not have done enough. Why do you think we have this misconception? Well, it's been the message for years. I mean, the no pain, no gain was something Benjamin Franklin used to say, right? And then Jane Fonda popularized it in the 70s, and we've just believed this message. Also, we've really associated injuring a muscle and having it repair itself with building muscle. And while that is one way to build muscle, we've known for 20 years based on research, it's not necessary. You can make the same progress without injuring your muscle if you build up gradually. It can take on average about three weeks longer, so it takes a little bit longer, but you don't have to feel pain. And again, when you push to pain, you actually risk having a setback and injuring yourself. So it's not worth it for most of us who aren't real trained athletes who know what we're doing and have massage therapist to help us heal after those injuries. So how do you think we can best measure whether or not we've had a successful workout? One of the things I love that you always talk about is that a workout looks different for everyone, but it's just important to move. But how can we measure whether or not we, we did well when we're, we're, we're attempting to work out? Yeah, I think it's reassessing and learning to listen to your body, right? So you could just enjoy exercise and have a gentle, nice workout, and that's okay. But if you do want to make gains, it's going, okay, this is challenging. I feel like I've worked a muscle, but it hasn't progressed to pain yet, right? But I'm, a bit, I'm starting to get sloppy in my form. That's a time to stop. Or if you're feeling fatigue, fatigue is not the time to go, no pain, no gain. This is when I get all my gains. It's actually your brain trying to tell you to stop. It's trying to prevent injury. Injury. So we really have to rethink how we think about pain and movement. Pain does not make mean progress. We don't need pain for progress. Well, Maggie, thank you so much for sharing that message with us. It's important to rest and to listen to our bodies, and they will be much healthier because of it. So thank you.